Hi, my name is Chris. This is the Camille Corp. And today we are talking about printing a Mandalorian helmet. Uh, covered this a little bit in the pitch. If you haven't checked it out, you might want to do so. But getting it scaled, getting it set up on the printer and having it successfully complete can be a challenge. So let's walk through how to do all of that right after this. Hi, again, this is Chris. Welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we talked about how this bucket was not the right size for my head. Um, I had gone to the trouble of sizing and looking at how I needed to do this, but I didn't do a great job. So uh, the second helmet is off the printer. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about how to make sure this is the right size and how to optimize your printer and your slicer so that you aren't wasting filament and wasting time. So uh, we'll do that and then we'll check and see if this guy actually fits the way it's supposed to. Fingers crossed that we're good to go moving forward. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, I use Prusa slicer instead of Cura. Um, and I do it for a couple of reasons. The first, uh, I, th I think I get better layer lines with Prusa. And the second one is that this slicer allows you to actually cut models right within the software. You don't need a second piece of software to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to click Add, hit this helmet that I was using, and we're going to bring that helmet in. It's loading. Okay, and here is the helmet. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is just talk a little bit about the interface. So all your tools to do things, move, rotate, cut, resize, all that is over here. Uh, additionally, you can come over here um, to scale factors. And I scaled my helmet at 105%. Um, and the first thing I did was I wanted to make sure 105% would work. So that's taking this center section where the cheeks are the smallest and making sure that's going to be enough to fit your head. So if you click on cut, you have this plane that you can cut on. And we want to get that little section. So we're going to discard the lower part. We're going to keep the upper part. We're going to perform the cut. It's going to think about it for a minute. We're going to do a cut again. And we don't not don't want very much. We just want a little bit. So we're going to come down. This time we're going to keep the lower part and discard the upper part, which leaves us with a piece that looks like this. Okay, welcome back. So as you can see in front of us, we have three cross sections of the helmets. We have one at 100%, one at 105%, one at 110%. And again, it's just that cross section at the smallest part of the helmet because that's really where you need to make sure that this thing is going to fit over your head. Uh, so after printing all three of these, I determined 100 was way too small. Too much of a squeeze. 105 felt pretty good and I felt 110 was a little too roomy. So d deciding to go with uh, the 105, now it falls down to how do we get this set up on the printer so that it is printing as efficiently as it can. Okay, now we're back in Prusa Slicer again, and we're going to talk about how to get the helmet fitting on the CR10 bed so that we can get it all without having to cut it down into pieces, right? So we're gonna bring the helmet in again. Uh, as we said, we're gonna scale this at 105% uh, to fit my head. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select the model and we're going to look at it from this angle. And if we print it as is right now without doing anything else, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to create a lot of supports, right? Um, the whole goal of printing something this size is to do it in less time with less supports, right? Uh, especially if you're using your printer for commissions or 
sales or other things like that. Anytime you're printing something you don't have to is wasted time. So if we just let this thing chew on this, it is going to support that entire underside that we saw that was off the bed. It's going to support the entire inside of the helmet. And a lot of that is unnecessary. Okay, so here is the helmet uh, right as we right as we scaled it, right? So um, what you can see here as it finishes loading, uh, you can see the yellow part, which is the model, and then that green, all of that green uh, are the supports that it's trying to throw in there. Um, and slicers, by default, are going to be over generous with their support usage, right? Uh, it is better to have a well-supported print that takes longer and uses more filament than it is to consistently fail out of the gates uh, as you or I get used to the slicer and what it can do. You can come in and you can tweak individual settings, how you want this thing to react, what angle you want them to place supports and things like that. Cura actually has a pretty cool built-in tool that I like and it allows, it allows you to block the supports and that's that's instrumental in getting this print from five days, if you look down here in the corner, uh, five days, 15 hours, uh, getting it down to two days and one hour. So it's worth noting, my printer settings are currently set to super draft. So it's at 0.2 millimeter. Um, and, you know, super detail is 0.8 millimeter. So this is as low as it can go. And for big pieces like this that you're going to be sanding, this is fine. Now, let's look at this again. The green, once again, are the supports. The orange is the model. If we come over here, let's look at this. Support material is taking over 70% of the filament. Now, let's keep in mind that a roll of filament is somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 grams. I don't know the exact number. And if we come down here, we can see that this is using yeah, 1,388.5 grams. So not only is this going to take five days, but it's going to require you to switch out your filament uh, probably, you know, two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through your print. Um, if we look at this, we can, like, tilt it under here, and you can see how it has supported the entire inside as well, the top of that dome. Now, here's the thing. If I get back here to my normal print, Print my normal mode here. Um, we don't need all that in there because it's a dome and it will fill it. It will support itself for the most part. And also, all this space in here, where the between the back of the helmet and the print bed, we can adjust that as well. So we are gonna do a rotate, and we're gonna grab the rotate tool, and we're gonna come down so it looks closer to even. And it drops down immediately, so you can kind of see where it's at, right? Could go a little further. Uh, it turned blue because we went outside of the allowed printable area. Um, so let's look at it. See, yeah, we're hanging off on the edge. And what I ended up doing with my print so I ended up grabbing it like this, and we're just going to rotate it so the front of the helmet is facing one of the corners. And it turned green again, means we're still in the bounds of the printer, so you can go ahead and center that where you want to center it. Um, and then finally, paint on supports. Let's click on that. So paint on supports, the left mouse button, in forces support, so it makes sure the supports are there. The right mouse button will block support, so you can use that anywhere you don't want a support to generate. And we talked about how the inside of that helmet is full of supports. So what we're going to do is we're going to swim down here, and we're going to right mouse. Actually, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this brush size highest. It'll go up to eight. We're going to come here 
and the red means it's blocking the support. So we're just going to kind of draw an area here. And I have a feeling I still need to get around in here. Now, when you're doing this, you really need to take your time because if you miss even one pixel, it is going to try to throw support in there. And I found this kind of motion actually works a lot better than just wildly scribbling with your mouse, right? Um, because you're on a set path, you've got some overlap, you're not going to miss spaces, hopefully, here and there. Um, another place that I saw supports being generated were around these little knobs on the side. Um, now these are uh, to help line up the earpieces. Let's undo that. Um, but the printer will handle those fine. We don't need to support those. And we're going to come around here and we're going to hit the other side. Okay. Let's see what that looks if we hit slice now. Remember, we were at over five days at the last one, right? I'm using something like 1,380 grams of filament. So just by realigning that print, uh, making sure the bottom is flush and blocking out the supports in the center, let's see what we can get down to. Okay. This already work, looks a lot better, because if you remember the first time, we had supports all the way around the front of the helmet. Not just supporting the top part of the eye slit, but all the way around the front, right? And we have the back of the helmet now on the print bed, uh, just like the front, so we don't have all of that support there. Uh, so this is, this is looking a lot better. Uh, it does have some support bleed through down through the cheeks. Uh, I think those are tied to probably supporting that eye slit uh, on the inside of the helmet. But we'll uh, be able to check that here for sure here in a second. Oh, and those uh, connectors to the earpieces are not supported now. Okay, let's have a look. So we are down to 2 days, 10 hours, 46 minutes. Use filament 601. So this is less than half of what your filament usage would have been if you hadn't have moved this thing around and blocked out supports. Coming over to this side, instead of some crazy number, right, 35% of this print is now supports. Amazing improvement. 21% uh, is the external perimeter. Uh, your, your internal and your solid infills together make up about that as well. So this is much more balanced. This is a much better setup if you're going to print something like this. Now, could we tweak this a little bit more? Sure. Could we come up to this little triangle above the eye slit and like get rid of that support? Yeah. Uh, if we come in here, it looks like we did miss a few spots. So we could come back in. We could blot those spots out. We could predict this, get this reformatted for export and get this closer to just one or two days, one hour on the nose. So that is how, oh, and we do have uh, supports for this back area, which is uh, pretty, pretty important. It's a pretty sharp angle, so I would leave those there. Um, but this is uh, what I used to print my print, and it did come out right at around two days and one hour, and why don't we go over and have a look at that right now. Okay, the helmet's off the printer. Now is uh, what we lovingly refer to as the moment of truth. Because it's not gonna fit with glasses on, so we're gonna lose those.
this fits so much better than the last one. Um, it's not overly snug, however, it doesn't move around. And if you notice, it doesn't come out almost to where uh, my shirt seam hits my shoulders like the previous helmet did. So um, I think this is a success. Uh, the next piece, obviously, is to print out the, uh, the ear caps uh, and then start to sand this down. Um, the plan would be to hit it first with uh, probably an 80 grit with the mouse sander, uh, then probably 100 or 120, uh, maybe jumping up to a 220, and then doing some hand sanding with a 400 before we start thinking about some filler and more sanding and then primer. So we will be covering all of that in future videos. So once again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the comment section if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any feedback, any of those things, I'm always happy to uh, read and respond to. And um, finally, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Uh, I know your time is valuable, so I do appreciate it. Have a great day.